God of War is the third title to adopt AMD's new FSR2 upscaler, bringing the same temporal reconstruction as found in Nvidia's DLSS and Unreal Engine's TSR, only without being tied to specific hardware or game engines. In fact, there are no limits to which GPU can be used to run this new revision of FSR. If you can run the game, you can use FSR2. AMD do however have a few suggestions as to which graphics cards should work well and which shouldn't. The RX 480, according to the Radeon people, shouldn't make the cut. Let's see about that, shall we? The RX 480 4GB is actually on the same architecture as the minimum recommended GPU, the RX 590, only with less VRAM and lower clock speeds so AMD's reason for not recommending it isn't clear. The upscaler itself does use some of the GPU's resources to process the image, which might result in less of a performance boost than you might expect. However, I found that even integrated graphics can see a substantial uplift in frame rates. I might accuse AMD of being overly cautious here, because I think you'd have to go pretty far down the performance ladder to find something that wouldn't gain something from using FSR2. I benchmarked the RX 480 recently in its own video and found that in general gameplay, the card can produce about 60 FPS on average in God of War at 1080 original settings, and that the previous FSR's ultra quality setting could provide enough FPS to keep above 60 most of the time. God of War isn't the most even title for performance, however, so this time I picked a slightly more demanding area to test. The benchmark run starts in this indoor scene, which has been known to cause some stutters in the past. It then takes in an extended outdoor cutscene, leading into the first stage of a boss fight. Unfortunately, the game's 4GB VRAM buffer means testing at high or above just isn't advisable, so I've stuck with 1080 Original and tested all four levels of FSR 2. The reference pass at native resolution was somewhat slower than my previous test, thanks no doubt to all the dramatic close-ups and lighting changes. Averages were only 51 FPS and 1% lows were in the mid-30s. Running the test a second time using FSR quality has an immediate impact, to the tune of about 28%. With the render resolution dropped effectively to 1280 by 720 the game now runs at an average of 65 FPS, only dropping as low as 50. Switching to FSR Balanced gains an extra 10% performance on average, exceeding 70 FPS, but not enough to bring the 1% score above 60. In fact, even going down to FSR Performance doesn't achieve that. Averages gain another 10% above native resolution, but 1% lows are still lingering in the middle 50s. Finally, FSR Ultra Performance has a massive 70% boost above the average frame rate at 1080, but minimums still fail to hit the magic 60. The average frame rate at this setting is close to 90 FPS, but the cost of getting there is pretty steep. Each level of scaling inevitably brings a change in image quality. At the lowest render resolution, it's still kind of a marvel that the game remains as legible as it does, but I'd imagine playing the whole game this way could be pretty harsh on the eyes. Still, I've presented some side-by-side -side comparisons here for you to pass your own judgement. Let me know which setting you'd be happy with in the comments. The RX 480 isn't a weak GPU by any stretch. I dare say an 8GB version of the card could probably handle the high or even ultra quality preset, at least with the appropriate amount of FSR. Unfortunately, the 4GB 480 is just barely scraping under the game's VRAM requirements for running at original settings, and increasing quality to high would exceed that limit. 
The performance hit from exceeding the VRAM buffer can be pretty heavy, and I don't think FSR would mitigate it that much. As it stands though, the original preset is still visually impressive, and at 1080 most of the lower quality assets don't stand out as much as at higher resolutions. Next time I'll be looking at a card that AMD apparently consider to be the minimum that you should consider using with FSR2, but I think it's going to prove to be far more capable than they do. That video should be coming in the next few days. In the meantime, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.